Tell the story. How I made a way. As soon as I get home. We are so blessed to have songs that have mean so much meaning to us. And writers like Thomas Victor who can do songs like that. I, last Sunday I wanted to sing Anyhow by Thomas Victor, but I said they're not ready for that yet. Yes, you know, I got a few of them. Today. But it's just such a blessing when you can see how the song compares to your life. That writers are not just writing songs to make us feel good, but songs about what we're ultimately about. We don't come to church just because. Uh, we come to church because we know that there is a place that God has prepared for us. Sometimes we don't like to talk about that or hear it, but we are here just for a short while, and God is preparing us, and that's why we don't have time when we're here to not be in the place that God wants us to be. There's enough distractions in the world out there, and we need to get it right while we're here. And so I'm looking out, I see you all praising the Lord. I, I get excited. I'm, I'm happy to see you praising the Lord because God is good. I tell you to be festive. I, I want you to do it because we need to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And so I said I was going to help you all a little bit today. So I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Psalm. Psalm 31. You can find it in the First Testament. Table of contents, your iPads, your laptops, your phones. You have no reason not to be able to find it today. When you find it, please stand to your feet as we reverence the reading of the word of God on today. Psalm 31, starting at verse 19. Psalm 31, starting at verse 19. Psalm 31. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you still don't have it, say, help me, Lord. Amen. Psalm 31 and 19, and the word of the Lord reads, How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you have bestowed in the sight of all, on those who take refuge in you, and shelter of your presence to hide them from all human intrigues. You keep them safe in your dwelling from accusing tongues. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed me the wonders of his love when I was in a city under siege. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight, yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord preserves those who are true to him, but the proud he pays back and forth. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope, all you who hope in the Lord. And the word of the Lord is blessed as you remain standing. Say neighbor, oh neighbor, oh neighbor, get your hope back. Get your hope back. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, now we stand before you in this awesome responsibility called preaching. God, an assignment that is probably the toughest assignment that you've ever given. But God, we come to declare your glory first. And we come to move out of the way so that you can get in the way of those who need you most. So God, we ask that you would Stand up and sit me down. Hide me behind your cross. Allow the people to see and hear you and not me. Let this word be a blessing to somebody. Let it be helpful to somebody. But most of all, let it deliver somebody out of the hands of the enemy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Get your hope back. Yesterday at our meeting and greet, challenged and, uh, and I challenged the church and other ministries with the question, who's going to put the fire out? 
uh, alluded to the fact that we have strange fire in the church, and that fire is dangerous because it will cause God to not be pleased. And when God is not pleased, he knows how to remove what is causing his displeasure. As for us, strange fire breeds negative feelings and a loss of hope. This is the first Sunday of Advent season, and there are three meanings of coming uh, that Christians describe in Advent. The first and most thought of happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus came into the world as a baby to live as a man and die for us. The second, came, second can happen now as Jesus wants to come into our lives now. And the third will happen in the future when Jesus comes back to the world as king and judge and not a baby. Today has been identified as our Sunday of hope as we are giving to the St. Jude Foundation uh, with the hope that there will be a continued effort to remove the effects of cancer for children and everyone else. We do this with much encouragement, yet some people are here today and there still seems to be a feeling that has been placed inside of them that makes them feel as there is no hope in their personal lives. Isn't that amazing? It doesn't matter how, how dressed up we look. It doesn't matter how many people came here clapping their hands and patting their feet. Somebody showed up here and they have no hope in their heart. You may not want to admit, but you can look like you have hope. And you can act like you have hope. But if you don't have any hope, it will eventually show. In fact, I come to even argue that you can lose your hope. And some people lost their hope and they're still looking for it. Just like you lose your keys and you can't find them. I, I know I'm talking to somebody, I'm talking to myself. Even these new keys, you lose a part of the key and you messed up all the way. And you can't figure out how to get to it. The reason why you are seeking and trying to get what you have lost because you know that without it, you can't go anywhere. Losing hope can be just as detrimental as losing your keys because without your keys and without hope, you can go nowhere. You can try to go and you can act like you're gonna go, but you have no movement. While doing some research on hope, I found an article in Psychology Today that talked about learned helplessness. In 1965, Martin Sigmund discovered learned helplessness. He found that when animals are subjected to difficult situations that they can't control, they stop trying to escape. They become passive. Personally, I believe that humans act the same way. When many of us experience devastating defeats, a persistent situation that cannot change or experience terrifying situations that we cannot control, we find ourselves becoming passive with a loss of hope. We develop a loss of hope for our ability to change our life, to change our painful situations. You would be surprised you might be sitting by someone or looking at someone who has ongoing mood disorders and they don't realize that it has been leading them into feelings of hopelessness. I'm not gonna get no shouts on this today because some people are being uncovered and I don't mind, don't mind uncovering you because once you're uncovered, it should free you up to throw your hands up and thank God for Jesus. Apathy or hopelessness sometimes seems puzzling to those of us who have found strength in God and our response to someone who has lost hope is always, you know what we say? I don't understand what's wrong with them. When we respond like that to people who lost hope, those same people respond to themselves the same way. In fact, they say to themselves, why wouldn't I try to get a job? Why wouldn't I try to make friends? Why wouldn't I eat healthier? Why wouldn't I leave an abusive situation? They say that to themselves because sometimes they're even saying to themselves they don't understand the situation that they're in. We all need to understand that when you have no hope, you see any effort to 
change your life as being futile. You may blame yourself. You might say that you cannot manage life. You cannot make friends and you cannot succeed in getting a job. You accept whatever happens as beyond your control and you begin to live in despair. And we hide it. We hide it sometimes by eating. We hide it sometimes by drinking. We hide it sometimes with drugs. We hide it sometimes with inappropriate behavior. We hide it because we do not want anybody to see the fact that I am the way I am because I lost my hope. When you don't have hope, you have no energy or no motivation for therapy or for any effort to change your situation. What's the use in reaching out to meet people? You are sure you'll be rejected. Why bother exercising or cleaning your home or volunteering? It won't really make a difference. You know you will always be lonely, depressed, anxious, unemployed, or stuck in the same situation that is making you miserable. You don't want to risk the pain of further disappointment of even trying. Yes, there's some people who feel that even if I try, I'm going to be in pain. I, I share with you that I uh, got a clip of a Snapchat of a friend of my son at 18 years old because he has not made it to college yet. He was losing hope and he even said in the snap, don't even encourage me. Because you know that in the situation that I'm in, that I can't get out. And in essence, he's saying to his friends, you can't encourage me, and you can't encourage me, and you can't encourage me, so don't even, don't even try to encourage me because I want to sit right here in this lack of hope. And I argue that when we get to that place, the devil is happy because he wants to pull us in. Oh, he's going to visit you if nobody else visits you. He's going to show up in your pity party if nobody else comes there. And he's going to want to help you to continue in that fashion. He's going to say, let's party with no hope as much as we can. Because I want to see your demise. Yeah. Unfortunately, this painful despair and resignation sets up a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you have no hope, no belief in therapy, or that any action will make a difference, then that may well be your outcome. Change is very difficult. It has multiple ups and it has multiple downs and requires motivation and commitment. That's the problem with the church. Some people don't want to change and do things differently because they have no motivation and they have no commitment. So they come and they act crazy in church. Yeah, they holler. Yeah, they scream, but, but they acting crazy because they're doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. I don't care how much you holler. I don't care how much you run around. If you broke, you still gonna be broke until you do something to change it. And some folk wanna tell you, turn around three times and it's gonna be over. No, you're gonna be dizzy in the same way you were. You got to be able to trust God and look at somebody and say, get your hope back. There are many ways to find hope, but as Christians, we must go to God first. And in the text, David wants us to understand that instead of yielding to impatience and despondency under our troubles, we should turn our thoughts to the goodness of the Lord towards those who fear and trust him. Anybody here ever turn toward the Lord and ask the Lord for some help? Well, I have any to you. We need to be able to turn to the one who we trust. All, all come as sinners. All of us come as sinners. Through, but we come through the wonderful gift of the only begotten son to be the atonement for our sins. David is prophetic for us because it, 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 he challenges us to not forget that Christ died for us so that we can defeat the pain of hopelessness. Yeah, that's why he was on the cross. 
Are you trying to understand? He was on the cross because he knew some of us would fall into despair. He was on the cross because he knew that some of us would give up. He, he, he knew some of us would give up in school and stop trying. And he knew that we would decide that we weren't going to do school anymore. He knew that some of us would give up in our relationship and we would just walk away from it. We would stop trying. Because he knew that if we would just look at him and we could see the struggle of him being on the cross, that maybe I might would go on and say, if I trust in God, I will get the strength that I need to get through this situation. We should never yield to unbelief or think under discouraging circumstances that we are cut off from the eyes of the Lord. In our discouragement and challenges, we should ask God to pardon our complaints and pardon our fears and increase our faith, increase our patience, increase our love, and increase our gratitude, and teach us to rejoice in tribulation and in hope. Last week I said rejoice anyhow. I said hallelujah anyhow. And I said that to somebody because I knew somebody still would show up today uh, and they would still feel like uh, trouble was in their way uh, and their situation would still look like it's the same. Uh, but I come to tell you the devil is a liar and if you can't get your hope back if he's not going to give it back to you you got to say, Satan, give me my hope back. I came today to commune with you so we all can remember that the deliverance of Jesus Christ is powerful. The deliverance of Christ with the destruction of his enemies will prove to us uh, that we have the strength and the comfort in our heart to help us to believe under any affliction. With Christ we have the power to suffer courageously with him so that we may triumphantly enter into his joy and glory. When you enter God's joy and God's glory, you are preparing to get your hope back. When you lift your hands and just wave them with tears in your eyes, you're preparing to get your hope back. When you start patting your feet, Regardless to the pain that you're going through, you are preparing to get your hope back. Oh, you ever been so mad when you sat there and just pat your feet in? Oh, you wanted to say something, but you couldn't say something? I'm telling you, you're just pushing the pedal to get your hope back. You got to look for and listen to the testimonies of the saints who have found solutions. There are many of us here who have found solutions. That's one reason why you need to make it out the Bible study so you can hear testimony, because we don't have testimony service anymore. But if you just knew some of the testimonies that some people have here, that would help you in your situation, and you don't even know it. And that's why even when you come to church, don't just come here to talk about people and gossip, but you need to say, hey girl, let me tell you something, God is blessing me. Oh brother, let me tell you man, God is doing something good for me. There are many, many, many people who have overcome adversity. I mean tremendous adversity. I can go row by row. I can start with Deacon Yumokoro. I can go over the cotton to the cloud and then I can just jump over and go to Sharika. I can go to Brother Pelham. And let me tell you, we won't have time enough uh, about hearing uh, how God has blessed uh, in the midst of adversity. Uh, if I was going to go through the whole church, uh, we'd be here all week long uh, about what God has done. Uh, and you dare to show up and not tell somebody how God has blessed you? You got to hear the stories. Uh, and you got to surround yourself uh, with those stories of those people. Uh, and when you are in despair, uh, you got to start taking one step at a time uh, to get out of the routine. Uh, oh, so that you can break that sense of powerlessness. Uh, you didn't become uh, hopeless overnight, uh, and you're not going to fix it overnight. Uh, oh, you got to do some simple things. Uh, watch this. Uh, we got some people who show up at church, uh, and they're not doing some simple things. Uh, some of y'all, you got so mad, you didn't you need to make up your bed before you left here. So you gotta make up your bed. Oh yeah, there's some people so depressed they don't even realize it. You wanna go back home and say, oh my God, he's a prophet, I ain't even make up my bed today. Well, you got to start simple, simple things. Some of y'all gotta start cooking dinner cause some people eat out so much that they forget what it's like to be in the kitchen and cook a real meal. Oh, and I can bring this drink too. Some of y'all cook so much 
uh, that you don't even go out of. Uh, so you don't even know what's happening uh, outside of the building. You got to go into increments. Uh, here we got some people here who don't have hope. And you thought it was just that you didn't like doing something. But something has pushed you into that place and you need a balance. Some of us got to talk to a friend. I'm not talking about gossiping with a friend. I'm not talking about complaining with a friend. But I'm talking about, you know, a real friend that you can talk to who'll be honest with you, who, who won't be caught up into your title or who you think you are, but be really honest with you and tell you about yourself when you need a real answer. You don't lose hope overnight, and you're not going to get it back overnight. You have to take a step. Oh, you got to take a step and get yourself into the right direction. And that action that you do, you got to begin to start doing it over and over again so that change can really take place. Oh, you keep doing it more, and the more you overcome. Overcoming the inertia of helplessness can help you build your own. Are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? 
Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Hope is a small word, but it is one of the most powerful. Why? Because in hope lies the power of the human soul to turn to God and live in his promise as if his promises will come true. Did you come to church to believe that his promises will come true? That he will never leave you? He will never forsake you? Did you come here to believe that his promise is true? That he will make a way out of nowhere? Are you just waiting for the miracle to happen? Maybe I'm telling you the miracle is on its way. Let him know the miracle is coming. It's coming. It's coming. On the sign of Advent said the miracle is coming. Children on December 25th, the miracle is coming. Who is that, Pastor Platt? But let me tell you something. Some people think hope is an emotion. I came to let you know that true hope is a discipline. Oh, I know that'll mess you up. A determination to believe in God's reality and power, even when the world seems to be crashing down around you. That is the genius and the power of hope. It flies in the face of calamity, saying the world can't do its worst to me. The world can do what it wants to me. But I still have hope. Any witnesses here? When you think like that, you know regardless of whatever happens, your hope should tell you that this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because God will take care of me. Oh, you remember that song? Do every day. I think I got some old folk in church. I'm about to close now. We got to get to communion. So as I close, I need you to know that people with hope can put out the enemy's fire. All that enemy's fire can be pushed out. People with hope got a water hose that are just dampen everything that the enemy starts to do. You want to put out some fires at home? Just have some hope. You want to put out some fires on your job? Just have Hope. Don't worry, Nia. I asked you who's going to put the fire out. If you don't put it out, I'm going to put it out. Because I'm going to have some hope. Regardless to where it looks, regardless to what it seems like, I'm going to have some hope. Anybody here with me? If you want to put that fire out, if you're burning with the hopelessness in your relationship, I come to tell you all you got to do is say, God. Is have hope, but the 
is not full. The church is not full. But the heat is on. The rules is not full. The church is not full. But the mortgage is paid. The heat is, the heat is on. And guess what? The electric bill is down to zero. Don't you dare let the devil 
will try to take it in this season, especially this season, because your hope should be in Jesus. When you place your hope in him, he will bless you. He will, he, he, he will if you trust him, he will deliver you. And he will make a way of the road. You gotta surrender. Oh. As we 